boom. All right, we got the- SCP-1875 Antique Chess Computer. That is a lot. Um, By the guy, Dr. Bob. Y'all know how this goes. Oh, yeah, by the way, bro. Yo, Void, bro. Still waiting for that retraction. Yeah. Uh, anyways, um, so let's go ahead and uh, let's get into this, bro. Let's, you know, let's see what I know, bro. Let's see what it's talking about. The mid 19th century, in a village not far from St. Petersburg, Russia, yes, where a it is. show carnival has been set up. There are a number of tents displaying various attractions, a man juggling fire in front of one. In another, a large bear balances on top of a ball. A detective from the St. Petersburg police force has been led here in the course of his investigation into the disappearance of a local chess prodigy's twin daughters. He had heard a rumor that the girls may be here, and he could easily imagine a kidnapping victim forced to perform as part of this seedy traveling circus. After passing by a contortionist and a man throwing knives at a woman strapped to a board, he found what he had been My looking boy, for. He just walking past that so casually, bro. He said, hey, bro, you know? <laughs> a large tent with a hand-painted sign reading, That shit looked like a curse. What am I looking at? That don't say campo. I know in your head, as you, bro. Does that? That's not English, is it? That <laughs> okay. The samurai see the unbeatable chess automaton. The detective had heard about these kinds of shows and had even seen one himself. They would claim that their mechanic. Leon Blood with the subscription with the. Hold on, hold on, hold on. Prime. Good luck, boy. Appreciate that. Thank you. Thank you so much. Technical contraption could somehow play chess and beat even the best grandmasters without any human assistance. But the detective knew their secret. Inside was a person, cleverly hidden in such a way that you'd have no idea from the outside. But there was always someone in there, pulling on strings or levers to manipulate the machinery as the crowd looked on amazed at the feats technology was capable of. And who better to hide inside one of these charlatan boxes than a small girl who had already shown an incredible aptitude for chess. Two girls were even better than one. They could work together or take turns playing in shifts. The detective had the feeling in his gut that had yet to be wrong. The girls were in that machine. The detective enters the tent housing the automaton. Mixed with the gift the entrance, is so whoa, he bro. Appreciate that. Hold up. The smoky lamp lit tent is crowded with men all huddled around something in the center. <laughs> Two a girls. Most of cheers come from the throng. And again, the man demands payment. I ain't gonna lie, man. Listen, if I already know how that box works, bro, I'm gonna go up to that box and kick it, bro. What are you talking about? Man, nigga, get, get, get your ass up. For you entrance, about? Poking the detective in the chest, telling him. This is like that one episode of SpongeBob where we're like, are you tough enough? I will right hand you to your jaw like Poirier did to McGregor, bro. Back up and don't touch me. Look, he looked like he about to spit on him, though. I don't know. He looked like he loading up a loogie. Oh, they ain't for you talking about him. He has to pay or get out. The detective asks if he's the owner of the machine. But the man says he's just the exhibitor. He again stresses that the man has to pay or he'll be forced bro. to leave. Do y'all know how much that hurts? Bro, touch yourself right here in the chest, like right under... Like your rib, or what is it like? Yeah, like your rib where your rib starts. It's like little, like the when it when it when your belly start first starts getting soft right after the bone, bro. And poke that. That hurts, bro. That, bro, I will be mad. Don't be poking me right there, yo. Yeah? Again, punctuating his point with a stern poke to the chest. As the man pokes the detective again, though, the detective grabs his hand and twists his arm behind his back. <laughs> he asks yeah. again. Yeah, look at his face. Look at his face. What you doing, bro? <laughs> what you doing, bro? Who the owner of the machine is, but the exhibitor, through gritted teeth, tells him he really doesn't know. He only communicates through letters and doesn't know the owner's real name, or even what he looks like. The detective shoves the man aside and heads deeper into the tent. He enters the crowd of men, pushing them aside, and finally sees what everyone has been so amazed by. There in the middle of the room is a chessboard on top of a steel table connected to a small steam engine. Sitting next to the table is a stationary suit of samurai armor, and across from that is a Russian man who appears to be deep in thought. He is playing chess, and his game against the samurai does not look to be going well. The detective sees the man make his move, and then, almost instantaneously, a piece moves by itself across the board in response. The man buries his head in his hands. Checkmate. The crowd erupts in cheers as the detective makes his way to the table. The exhibitor is rushing towards him, trying to stop the detective as he inspects the samurai suit. The suit falls to the ground. It's empty. The exhibitor is pulling on the detective, pleading with him to leave, 
The detective knows the girls are in here, though. If not in the suit of armor, then under the table itself. The detective grabs the chessboard and pulls. To his surprise, it comes off easily. And underneath is machinery. A complicated series of tubes, magnets, and gears whir and hum with electric current. The detective can hardly comprehend what he's looking at until he spots it. There in the middle of the machinery are two glass jars connected to the rest of the device by wires. There's a pink blob of organic material in each jar, brain matter, and they are labeled with the missing girl's names. <sighs> What is wrong with you niggas? <laughs> hey yo, bro, what in the world are we talking about right now, bro? What is happening, bro? What's happening? What's happening? What's happening? What's happening? What's happening? What's happening? This is SCP-1875, also known as the Antique Chess Computer. SCP-1875 is a chess automaton from the Victorian period that is made up of four main components. The first of which, SCP-1875-1, is a steel table measuring 72 centimeters by 72 centimeters by 64 centimeters. Well, those some standard e those are standard chessboard paint. Those are exact. Those are exact replicate. Like that's exact measurements, my nigga. You said cozy. Where's the roast? It's your roast. Oh damn, I <laughs> bro, I did that so wrong, bro. <laughs> Y'all don't even know what I was gonna do. I was about to say it's your host with the roast. Mm, I'm, uh, never mind, bro. Whatever. Inside the steel box is a sophisticated piece of machinery that combines mechanical and biological elements. The movement of the pieces comes by way of magnets, with the moves themselves appearing to be decided by an analytical engine. Integrated into the analytical engine is brain tissue from the twin 14-year-old daughters of a Russian chess prodigy who- Hey, I ain't gonna lie, bro. Listen, if those are the brains, I'm kind of disappointed, bro. You know, I was trying to look for some Jimmy Neutron dome pieces, bro. But those really just look like two pieces of, like, really raw sirloin steak cuts. Um, yeah, those are, yeah, th those are subpar brains at best. I, I don't know how big those jars are in comparison to the brain. But listen, bro, them brains don't look too big, bro. They look like they're about, like, these big, bro. I don't know. Who went missing during the 19th century and were never found. The pieces, which have been designated SCP-18752, form a standard 32-piece chess set and are carved in an oriental style. The pieces have magnetic bases, and the tops have been identified as being carved human bone and genetically matching the brain tissue in the machine. SCP-18753 is a small steam engine with variable speeds that is connected to the machine via a drive shaft. No, I'ma let it slide. I'ma let it slide. <laughs> Yo, and back up, back up, Shogun. <laughs> I ain't kind. Appreciate. Oh my God, I just peed, bro. We just hit that sub goal. Oh my goodness. Oh my goodness. What a wonderful day. <laughs> Yo, shout out to all y'all, cozy game. We hit the sub goal for today, bro. Hey, bro, I ain't streamed for like four days, and y'all just blessed me with hitting the sub goal. Thank y'all so much. Seriously, hey, shout out my boy Heem. Eh. But seriously, bro, you're not the Shogun, bro. Is Corey in that suit? Hello, 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 Tin Can. Like, fuck out of here, bro. I'm not trying to see you right now. 18th century Gusoku style samurai armor. The armor appears to have no actual connection to the machine, mechanical or otherwise, and it now seems as though the armor was merely a prop. Though multiple foundation researchers have reported feeling a sense of un- Y'all say who my favorite YouTuber is? Bro, look, 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 look. I'm watching it right now, look, look, look. Look, I don't know if y'all knew this. Woo! With another gifted sub, we've broken the sub goal. Listen, bro, hey, thank, thank y'all so much, bro. Thank, thank y'all so much, seriously, seriously, seriously. Like, it means the world. But seriously, bro, this is my favorite YouTube right here, bro. You go into the search bar, right, right? You type in Isaiah Cozy, bro, and then you go right here, bro. You know what I mean? This man makes some fire content, bro. Like, literally, it's nothing I've never seen before, bro. On his most recent video, bro, this man started floating. Like, I mean floating, bro. Like, bro, P, 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 P. This is really my turn, Cozy Gang going up. Yeah, that's for sure. Main channel going, going up. up. Like, that right, I fuck, okay. yeah. Hannah on a beam, now the music starts bumping. Let's jump in, because you know I got all the facts. Keep it a stack, cut it up more when they attack. On the tight ends, hit a slow, they're running. Now I really got them frightened. <laughs> 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 
is on his right hand, left, right, throwing the hooks. Mike Tyson. Let him notice my hood. With the light, man, I'm getting big. They shut colossal tight. Oh my god. I'm powered up, supercharged, super saiyan, though. Better be cozy, hit that like, cause you already know. Give me a few years on that TV and radio. Chaining up these slow, spiky hair, call me Yu Gi Oh. You was not ready, no, that's okay. Falling so much, step back, fall away. Shooters gonna shoot, yeah, that's what they say. But it's all repeat and play all fucking day. Come on, bro. Come on, bro. That's 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 my favorite YouTuber, bro. That's my favorite YouTuber, bro. That's my favorite YouTuber, bro. Unease and anxiety after making eye contact with the suit's mask. SCP-1875 continues to be fully operational and even has adjustable difficulty levels depending on which speed the steam engine is set to. To test the chess playing abilities of the machine. A D-Class personnel was seated at the machine across from the Samurai, and moves that were decided by chess software were broadcast into the room. Games were played on each of the machine's five settings, and the chess software was used to measure SCP-1875's estimated rating on the ELO system, which is a method used to calculate the relative skill of players, with a higher number being better. At the first setting, the machine exhibited a chess playing ability that would be rated in the 800 to 1000 range which would be the equivalent of someone who knew how to move the pieces. Yeah, I'm still cozy. But otherwise, was laughably bad. Yeah, I'm sorry. Uh, I'm sorry to all the people on the YouTube channel, bro. Y'all probably like, bro, like, I can't comment on this because I have a confession. Even though I am a demon on checkers, I never learned how to play chess, bro. Leave me alone, 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 The second setting produced a result closer to 1,200, which would put it firmly in the novice category. The third setting improved the automaton's ability to anywhere between a 1200 and 2500 rating, which meant that it could perform like an amateur all the way up to a master level. The fourth setting, though, was where the machine became truly incredible and operated above a 2500 ELO rating. At that level, it would play like a chess grandmaster and sometimes operated at a level higher than any human has ever been recorded. The fifth and final setting was baffling, though. The machine would play erratically, sometimes at a level even higher than that measured on the fourth setting, but then in the next game would make nonsensical decisions or look like it was trying to lose, <laughs> sometimes even making moves bro, that no, were shut up, bro. Multiple games were played at this setting, and the amount of a Hey, bro, that's just a, I don't give a fuck setting, you know what I mean, bro? Oh my, all right, Heem, all right, Heem, bro, listen, 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 all right, bro, like, chill, bro, chill, bro, chill, bro, chill, bro, chill, bro. turn your cheek real quick, bro, turn, turn your cheek, bro. Nah, nah. <laughs> Yo, oh god, bro, bro. That's this that that's that uh that's that I don't I don't that's that I don't care, bro. You know what I mean? Logical moves only increased. The pieces began to move faster and faster, and eventually they began to ram together until several were chipped. The testing was quickly halted after this, and further tests were suspended until a way to test without potentially damaging the pieces was found. Following this bizarre result something even stranger happened. Five minutes after the test, an email was received by all members of the SCP-1875 email distribution list. The message, which appeared to come from a research analyst involved with 1875 research, consisted only of a single image <laughs> which has been classified as it is suspected of having dangerous memetic properties. Multiple members of staff opened the email, leading them to unintentionally view the attached image and soon after reported numerous symptoms. They would immediately begin feeling anxiety, followed by a headache and fever. That nigga, I thought he, he went look like Xavier Woods in, in, the, in the wheelchair X-Men or Xavier Charles, I forgot his name. I don't know, I don't know what, bro. Imagine dying by a chess game, bro. Two hours after viewing the image, they would begin feeling restless, unable to sleep, and hear auditory hallucinations. After four hours, visual hallucinations would begin as well. After seven hours, while still awake, they'd be exhibiting less and less response to stimuli. After 11 hours, there would be only brief periods of lucidity, during which the afflicted person would appear to recover completely and immediately demand access to the computer on which they originally observed the image. After 12 hours, well, it only gets worse from there. SCP-1875 has been classified as Euclid. And the most important aspect of its containment is that it never comes within transmission range of a wireless data network of any kind. To help ensure this, the anomaly is kept contained within a Faraday cage at all times, and a network security expert is always on site. 
During testing, the steam engine's speed is only to be placed on one of the first four settings, and never the fifth. This rule became necessary following a test at the fifth level, after which a laptop computer was introduced into the Faraday cage to see if new research material would be transferred onto the computer similar to how the mimetic image appeared. It seems, though, that the laptop used was somehow infected and spread its virus to the entirety of the site's computer networks. All electronic communications with the facility were strictly forbidden by the O5 Council itself, which shows just how dangerous this could be. No electronic communications of any kind would be allowed until it can be determined just how SCP-1875 is transmitting its extremely dangerous mimetic image and how it can be prevented. In the future, should any staff come to unintentionally view or open an email that contains shachmate.exe, what you just say in my ear, bro? All right, bro. They are to immediately. Hmm. Yo, oh, Bob. Bob. What happened? No, I'm. I'm fine. Uh, are we still recording? Yeah. No, I can take it from. Uh... Now go and watch another entry from the files of Dr. Bob, and make sure. Make sure you. Subscribe. Yeah, okay. okay. And turn on notifications okay. so you don't miss a single anomaly as we delve further and further into the SCP Foundation's classified archives. I think, um, I'm going to go lie down. Hey, bro, listen. If Bob turns this and flips it into like something that's happening in the background. W in the chat, bro. He can. He has this opportunity to make this crazy. Whoa. I'm trying to show me up. Wow. Appreciate the three bones, Sharon. <laughs> that joke said hi, bro. <laughs> Appreciate the three bones, Sharon. Oh my god, bro. <laughs> oh, she. What's up, Grim with the red?